Do you? All right. I do like the colors. Oh, that's I do like scary, the though. <laughs> what we're going to try is, see, this is he's going to swing this over here. And just so you feel comfortable, it won't hit you, okay? <laughs> we'll have you uh, maybe stand right here. And let's see, can you back up and hold it like right in front of your eyes? Right, touching your eyes, touching your head. A little higher. There we go. That's where we'll have you start. You can relax for the moment. So we're going to have him let, it, let go of it like that. Just like you were holding. That was great. What do you expect to happen? Won't touch him. It'll swing. Whenever you're ready, sir. <laughs> no flinching whatsoever. Good job. <laughs> you done this before? Uh, I bowl a lot, so I'm not He bowls a lot, so he wasn't worried. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I won't ask him to do this one, although it looks like he'd be just fine. Uh, this, if I let, you let, just let go of it, what I'm trying to emphasize, energy is conserved, total energy, total net energy. So whatever energy this has to begin with, it's not going to magically pick up more energy and come back higher than it started with. The only way for that to happen is if I do work on it. Remember work causes a change in energy? So if I give it a little push, whoosh, then do I want to stand here? Heck no! Okay. <laughs> but uh, without any extra energy at all, here, let's go up here. Excuse my uh, hiney. I still probably flinch. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> and if anything, in real life, you guys already know this, I assume, that it doesn't come up as high as it, it actually doesn't even come up to quite as high as we started. It's a little lower. Why is that? Good, yeah. Some forces are acting upon it. Friction, air resistance. And so do we lose energy? Is energy not conserved? It's conserved as heat, total of the system. Yeah, the total energy is conserved. It might have it changed forms into something that left our system, like heat. And if we could account for how much heat got created, from that resistance and add it to what the ball still has, it would be the total as what, from, as what we started with. And the two types of energy forms that this is, is when it's moving, it has what form of energy? Kinetic. kinetic. That's the energy associated with motion. So the faster it's going, the more kinetic energy it has. Where does it have the most kinetic energy? There. Mm. The, where it's moving the fastest at the bottom. You see it comes and slows down, stops, picks up speed, picks up speed, speed, maxes, and then it starts slowing down again, slowing down, slow, 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 stop. The other one is potential energy. Before I let go of it, we say this has potential to do work. It has energy stored in it, if you will. And we call this potential. It's a relative to uh, some reference plane. Most common is ground. In this case, it's actually easier. Doesn't matter, but we could say it has this much potential from the ground. And then we're going to increase that potential energy from here up to where I held it. You could just as well say, call this zero. You know, the bottom of it swings zero. Say it has zero potential energy right here. Then, I've now raised its potential energy, and it's based on that height. It's all potential energy right here. It's no potential now, potential there. No potential, back to potential. What form does it have right here on its swing? Yeah, a mixture of both. If it's a halfway between here and the bottom, It'll have, be half potential and half kinetic. How about here-ish? There you go. Three fourths of which one? Uh, I mean, it'll be three fourths kinetic, but it'll be. Yeah, the total energy, three fourths of it will be kinetic because most of it's in motion now, and maybe a quarter of it in uh, potential. And then no potential, all kinetic, 
back to potential. Just changes forms. And where does all this energy come from in the first place? How does this ball get energy? Go ahead. Very good, I, and you're right too. You exert a force on it over a certain distance. So I just did work on it. Work's not a form of energy, but it allows me to change the energy of the object. I did work on the ball. Very good. What's doing work on the ball when I let go of it? Gravity. See, you guys, this is good. You guys are good. All right. Some other uh, quick examples of energy. We could say this is potential energy of zero, kind of the, the equilibrium reference point. If I displace it, whoosh, it now is a distance away and we could say it, there's potential energy stored in the spring because you know what will happen when I let go of the spring, don't you? I do work, force for a distance, whoosh, I let go and the potential energy in the spring makes it oscillate. It overshoots. Why does it overshoot? It doesn't like go right back to here. When I let go it doesn't go and stop. How come? Yeah, inertia. Things in motion want to stay in motion. Or now you can think it has momentum. Inertia in motion. And so it's going to take a force and, or an impulse force for a certain amount of time to change its momentum and that takes a bit. So it overshoots. Eventually it can make it come to a stop, but now you have energy stored in it this way. And it's gained p gravitational potential energy. You could call this elastic potential energy, and you call that gravitational potential energy. But it's, it switches back and forth. And the, it has kinetic too. Right here, if we say that potential is zero, right now, then whoosh, we increase the potential. Where is it moving the fastest? Top, bottom, or middle? Here, here, or in between? Where is it moving the fastest? Oh, you guys know this whether you realize it or not. Does it come to a stop for a split second there? There? How about there? there. So it's slowing down on the ends. So it's moving fastest in the middle, just like the pendulum. And so it has the, it's, it's all in kinetic energy, right? Well, you do, do right here. Now, 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 now. <laughs> and so it's just transforming between potential and kinetic. But the total is always the same. Yeah, Kate? No such thing as negative energy. In real life, in practicality, correct. There's always these theoretical constructs that help uh, mathematicians and scientists solve things. And in that sense, you might have heard about negative energy. It's kind of like the imaginary number, square root of negative one in math. They're not real numbers. That's why they're called imaginary. But no, there's no such thing as negative. changes one form to another. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's do another one. I'm going to do uh, four. Okay, uh, I'm going to do work on this block to raise it up. Force over distance. There we go. It now has what form of energy? Potential. When I let go of it, it converts into kinetic. Yeah, potential decreases and the, the potential decreases and the kinetic increases. I did a force for a certain distance. How much force do I need to apply to this to raise it up? It's weight. I need at least its weight. Because it has mg, its mass times being accelerated down, that's its weight, mg. So if I can exert a force on it, at least that I can hold it up. You see, 
you probably agree with me at that point. Mg down, I'm exerting a force up, they're balanced, I can hold it steady. I can now move this at a constant velocity up. How does my force compare now to its weight? If I'm moving at a constant velocity, we got greater, we got equal. Anybody want to go with less? Okay. <laughs> What's constant velocity mean? Means no acceleration. And if no acceleration means the net force is zero. And if the net force is zero, that means all forces on it must balance, be equal but opposite. So if I'm moving at a constant velocity, then I do not need to exert any more force than its weight. Sure, I can lift it up like this and make it accelerate up, in which case now my force is greater than its weight, but it's not necessary to lift something. Most of us go kind of slowly, unless you're doing the weightlifting stuff, you know. But anyway, my point then is to review some of that stuff and connect it to this. The force I lift up is equal to its weight. So you can write I guess I'm not getting to that yet. That was the weight. And if I'm going to exert that force over a certain distance, that force is mg. And how high do I lift it? What's that distance? You can, we can call it h for height. That's gravitational potential energy. I did work on the block to lift it up. How much work did I do? However much it gained. When it gets at the top, it has so much gravitational potential energy. That's what they had, gravitational potential energy. I'm just short cutting. And this is the formula for it. And in this case, it's exactly equal to work. Because remember I said if you want to change the energy of something, you do work on it. The work energy theorem says that the amount of work you do on something is the amount of it, its energy changes. And if when I let go of it, what does work on it? Gravity. And how much work does it do? It's its weight. The whole time through free for all. Free, free fall. Yeah. <laughs> and so it does work on it for the same distance. So you see how it's the same thing? Okay, if it does work, it's changing that its gravitational potential energy to zero. Where does that go? Into kinetic. Very good. And kinetic energy, I mentioned last time, was one half mv squared. It was, it's proportional to v squared. That's important. So how do you think the gravitational potential energy at the top compares to the kinetic energy right before it hits the ground? They're equal. That's right. They just can transform. And so in this case, I do work. That's how much gravitational potential it gains. And when I let go, that's how much kinetic energy it has at the bottom. Yes? So Bow and arrow. Potential energy of 40 joules. So I expect the, uh, the bow, the string, is exerting a force on the arrow. So it does work by exerting a force over a certain distance. That work's going to create a change in energy. So it's going to uh, con convert this 40 joules of potential energy stored elastically in the bow into motion. So that's going to get converted to kinetic. And if total energy is conserved, then that bow should leave with, I thank you, the arrow should leave with 40 joules of kinetic energy. And if you know the mass of the arrow, you can figure out how fast the, the arrow shoots off, can't you? You would solve that for V if you knew the mass, or vice versa. Same with the block. 
or ball. If I know how high up I raise this, let's say I raise it a meter and this is 100 grams. Let's do it. It's gravitational potential energy, 100 grams. So that's 0.1 kilograms, oh, standard units here. Uh, gravity of 10 meters per second squared, and it's one meter up relative to the table. So we'll call this zero point up here. We would say it has one-tenth times 10 is one, one joule. This has one joule of energy, gravitational potential energy. Joule is the unit for energy. Which is the same thing as a Newton meter. That is true. Is that right? Four, yeah. Another way to remember that, that how, this is how I remember it. Work is in the units of joules. Force is in newtons. Distance is in meters. So we just, I did it wrong. Or I, or I wrote it wrong. <laughs> and that's a way to check myself. Work has the units of joules because it just transforms energy and all forms of energy have the unit of joules, which is a newton meter. Another way to think of it. So back to the ball, it's got one joule. How much kinetic energy will it have right at the bottom? And that's because energy is conserved. So the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, the mass was 0.1 kilogram, v one joule, get out of the way. So how you do that is, I'm going to get the V by itself, so I'm going to divide this, let's see, 0.1 is 1 tenth times 1 half, so that's 1 twentieth, divide it over, and you get 20 equals V squared. Be honest, did anybody, did I lose somebody? What? Oh, we're good, okay, I'm just checking. Do you see that one half, one tenth? That's one twentieth? So on this side I have one twentieth d squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by 20. Because you can do that. If you do it both sides, you keep it equal. So if you multiply this side by 20, those cancel over there. And on this side, you get 20. Yay, nay? <laughs> okay. That just left the V squared over here, and the 20 on the bottom we got rid of, it's now over here because we multiplied. So whatever the square root, you take the square root of both sides, that's legal, do it on both sides, you get V over here and whatever the square root of 20 is. Thanks. <laughs> Four to five meters per second. I know how fast the thing's going, right, before it hits. I, conservation of energy and conservation of momentum I use anytime I can, and it's usually easier and quicker than solving things kinematically with our motion equations. You can do it both, but energy is great because it has to be conserved. But so you can figure out how fast that was going, you can figure out how fast the bowling ball is swinging, you can figure, if you know how fast it's going, you know how high it's going to be. Here's another good example. The loop-de-loop. -loop. The roller coaster ride at Lagoon. It's great. You know, they, they are based just on this principle. That's how they work. They try to make them safe, of course, and there's a lot, that's more what the stuff's involved about building one. But all you do is you go, you start over here, and you, after you stood in line for two hours, and you, what are they doing? They're using a force to lift you up, increase your distance. They're doing work on you. Why? Because they want to change your gravitational potential energy. Okay, you get up here. <laughs> And once you're up here, all they have to do is let go. They don't have to, have to propel you anymore. 
because gr Earth acts on you, gravity. And your gravitational potential energy pulls you down. It turns into what? Kinetic energy. Right here, what's the potential? Zero. Zero. It's all in kinetic. You could determine how fast you're going if you know how high you started and your mass. Well, then it's, you start going back up. Do you slow down or speed up? Why? Gravity's pulling down. It's doing work on you, changing your form of energy again. You're transforming it. And so, yeah, it, you're, you're, you're lifting back up, so you're gaining gravitational potential energy, which means the kinetic energy must be decreasing to keep the total conserved. But the total energy right here has to be the same as the total energy here, ideally. So if you know your gravitational potential, MGH, Oh, it has to equal here mgh, this h, plus one half mv squared. So you know how fast you'll be going here. And then you study centripetal force and you'd know how fast you have to go to stay in there. But, so if you're high enough, you make it. If you're low enough, scary ride. Okay. How about somewhere in between? Do oh. you see it just came off the track there? Roller coaster rides want to avoid that. <laughs> but right for that split second, it has just barely enough energy to make it. It comes off the track. Scary. There's no support force, but it's momentum and inertia carries it forward and luckily this one still lands on the track. In real life, they keep safety things so you can never leave the track. Worst case is you'd, you'd get right here, you'd be tugging on your uh, seat belt and you'd go back down. Kind of like, but you, well, more like that. You start on this side, bummer. But <laughs> yeah, and the reason people like these or don't like them is because not that you're uh, going at a constant velocity, that's boring. Because at a constant velocity, you need no, there's no net force on you. It's like you don't feel anything. And we want to feel it because, whoa! When they say you're pulling so many G's, that's the G of acceleration. And the more you feel, whoa, some people like it, some people don't. And so the fact that you're uh, accelerating and decelerating and changing direction, remember that's acceleration. That's what we like. <laughs> and it feels good. But you got to start with enough energy so that you have enough at this point to be going fast enough to clear it. Total's the same here as it is here, as it is here, as it is here. So you can figure out how high you're going to end up over here too. You think it'll fly off? I haven't tried this. Hope I can get that back on. What do you think? You think it'll fly off? Yeah. We got real life here. Friction's coming into play, right? Oh! So here's the beauty. We use it as a feature. Total energy is conserved. We've been talking about gravitational potential energy and kinetic. Clearly, if we just look at those two, something seems to be lost. It got converted to heat by the, the force, the work done by friction. Could we figure out how much? Yeah. We just have to notice the difference in height. So if we measure how high this starts at, and it gets to here, we'll make life easy. A meter. <laughs> and 60.6 meters. You know, I don't even have to know what's going on in the middle. I just know that, hey, if total energy was conserved, it should have ended up at the same height. It didn't. How does its potential energy there compare to here? I don't know what M and, M and G, I know them, but this height we'll call one meter. The second one, was 0.6 meters. 
So that ratio, we lost 60%. Can you see that? I, I, we lost 40%. <laughs> it dropped 0.4 out of 1. 40% down. So if, if beginning, you know, we plugged all these in and said it was a, a hundred joules, for argument's sake, then how many are left? Sixty joules. Where did that other forty go? The work done by friction into heat. And we know, just from conservation of energy. Um, let's do this one. Now I'll ask a few questions, uh, more questions. Oi. So, we got this. What if, to get it to the same height, I go like this? He says the same amount of work done. Wait a bit. Wait, wait. Work is force times distance. I just, is this a longer distance? But it's less force. That's correct. This I have to overcome all of its weight. Here, the incline helps support it, so I don't have to push it with all of its weight. The force I apply is a little less than its weight. Do you see that? Because the incline's helping me hold it up. So yes, I don't need as much force. F is smaller. But D gets longer. And it does work out that the work ends up being the same. And if you're confused about that, think of it this way. When it gets here, how much gravitational potential energy does it have, whether it came up the ramp or I just lift it up? It's the same. It's the same height. It should have the same gravitational potential energy, right? So it doesn't care how it got there. The work doing it this way is the same as the work doing it this way. But say this is a grand piano. <laughs> Can you lift a grand piano straight up to the second floor? I can't. <laughs> Annis, you look, str you look strong. <laughs> but it's not wise, is it? Let's do this so it can stay put there. So what, I, what we like to do sometimes, or use a ramp to get it out of the truck or up to the second floor. We use stairs, which is like an incline, sort of. Well, now I, I have enough force to push it because it's less. I don't have to overcome its whole weight. But I do have to go farther to get to the same height. If I had to get up to here, a meter up, my ramp's going to have to be pretty long. Do you see that? And if you, if you still can't push it, make your ramp uh, down, <laughs> less of an angle. It means you have to push it farther, but at least you can do it now, right? You still do the same amount of work. It just, uh, you have to do it for longer distance. Real life comes into play. Here, you're just doing air resistance kind of minimal. Your incline, yeah, there's friction now. So, very good point. In real life, this will, you will need to imply slightly more work because your force will need to be a little larger than normal to overcome the friction. So what do we use to help minimize that? Reduce friction. A dolly. Reduce fr a dolly. <laughs> Well, let's just let's put it on a dolly and wheel it up, you know. Do, 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 do. The friction is drastically reduced. This is static friction. In between the wheel and the incline, it's not sliding. Do you see that? When something rolls, right when, watch this point part of the wheel. Comes around, comes around, comes around. Now it's touching, but it, it's touching statically. They're not trying to slide across each other. Do you see that? as opposed to sliding, where you know you can create more heat by doing this, Karate Kid, than just trying to, so you, you, uh, there's more work done by friction when something's sliding than when it's rolling. So that's a, a simple machine to help uh, reduce the force we have to use. So is an incline, a ramp is a simple machine. 
It doesn't allow us to uh, cheat conservation of energy. As your book explains great, machines do not uh, amplify or multiply energy. But you can change the amount of force that you do. Now, yeah? I understood you to say a few moments ago with respect to that red block. And if the red block had a certain mass. This has a certain mass, okay. Or a certain weight. Okay, certain weight. That if you apply the ignoring wind resistance or air resistance, if you apply exactly that amount of force, it could raise the block. Oh, yes. It would seem like that would be a standoff. Oh yeah, so we can go back to that. Again, why do I only need minimally, minimally uh, a force lifting up equal to its weight? You would think it wouldn't move. Force of its weight is mg, yes? So to at least balance that, I can exert that same amount of force and hold it still. What's its acceleration? Zero. What's its net zero, yes? And its net force? Zero. Right. Now, same game, but let's say the block is moving up with a constant velocity. Now the block's moving up at constant velocity, because that's the minimum you can do. This is where it seems like this needs to be more than that, correct? But it doesn't have to be. Do you remember what you learned? At constant velocity, we're not changing it, so the acceleration, the net acceleration, is zero, which means the net force is zero, which means the force is balanced, and you can still be equal. To get it moving in the first place, remember that elevator? To get this block moving from zero up to this velocity, you must apply more force than the weight. For that split second or at the beginning of an elevator ride, it, you do do that. But very quickly, you can get it to constant velocity. And so while it's moving, they can be balanced. And that's all you need to keep it moving. Because inertia takes over. And it'll keep moving at that constant velocity until um, you change the net force to something non-zero. Does that help? And, 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 and the reverse is true. When I stop it, I will have to uh, spike this force. I'll drop that. This one will win. And, and now there'll be a net force downwards to change its velocity and decrease it to zero. So it stops. So at the, right at the beginning and the end, you can do it. And of course, you can do more throughout the whole thing, but the minimum amount you only need its weight. So if you're taking into consideration the spikes at the beginning and end, it ends up averaging out. If you take it at the beginning and the end, yeah, things average out. Because once you're at the top, it still has MGH, gravitational potential energy, and it didn't matter how you got there. It's easier for us to think that the average force was the same all the way. But I could certainly, I gotta do it higher. Start fast, slow down. I can even go like this. Slow. Okay. It still has the same gravitational potential energy at the end. So it seems like I did more work on it, doesn't it? Not in this direction. The work is the force in that direction. I, and vertically, end result, I only moved it from here to there. You might take that. Which leads me to this question. Clicker time. I probably, oh, it didn't turn off.
All right, polling's open. Let's see what you think. You push on the stationary brick wall for several minutes. We discussed this last time. Let's see what you remember. If you're putting this together. You do no work on the wall at all, or you do do both or nothing. What happens when you're pushing a wall that doesn't move? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, channel forty four. Did you get it? Three, two, one. Uh, overwhelming. Six, two thirds of you think it's A. This is where I want you. I'm just trying to reinforce. You do no work on the wall because the wall didn't move. You moved it no distance in the direction you're pushing on it. You are doing work. That's where a lot of people think. Ah, what do you mean you? I'm doing work, I can feel it. I'm sweating. Internally you are, maybe on your muscles. Maybe your muscles are moving and you're exerting forces on them. But always remember, and don't let me get away with it if I slip, work is always a force acting on something. So you do work on something. And so you do no, you were doing, in that case, you're doing no work on the wall. But you are doing some work internally. Oh, okay. He says, it's a good question. If you push on a wall, but I'm on a skateboard, whew, you know what will happen to me. I'll start sliding, right? Let me ask it. Was there work done on the wall? No. Was there work done on me? Yes. yes. The wall did work on me because it, it, it moved me. Yes. All right, go. Work's done in lifting a barbell. How much work is done in lifting a barbell that's twice as heavy but the same distance? Hit. <laughs> We <coughs> ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, 89% A. <laughs> Work is force times distance, and you're trying to lift it. What force are you overcoming? It's weight. So if it's weight doubles, you're going to need twice as much force and thus twice as much work to have the same effect. I'm glad. What if you lift it faster? Did, does anybody think it's not the same? So we're, we're doing the same thing, but let's do it faster. Work is force times distance, correct? It says nothing about how long of time it takes. So it's the same work. Think of it. It gets to the top. It has the same gravitational potential energy. How to get it? The work you d exerted on it. Doesn't care how it got there or how long it took. So the term that we use for that is 
power. Power is how fast, the rate at which we use energy, or the rate at which we do work. Work changes energy. So think of it as work over time or change of energy per time. That's power. So which one would have more power? Going slowly or quickly? Quickly. Because you're doing the same amount of work, but in less time. Time's in the bottom. It's inversely proportional. You know this, because which one f are you going to be breathing heavier at the end? You know, do 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 do. Well, maybe, maybe a, that's a bad example because if you can't lift it in the first place, but I, it still holds. <laughs> Whether I lift this up like that, and I can just keep doing that. Let's just do do. I could probably do this for a while, but this <laughs> I won't last as long because I'm exerting more power. I ain't getting dizzy. Okay. So I'm changing the energy the same amount, but I'm doing it more quickly. That's power. All right, quit that. That was the right one. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you think. The first one. Think, read both, but answer the first part. Because you can't enter two at this point. Well, you can, but I'm not set up for that. So, a pair of identical balls. Well, you can read it, I guess, just as well as. Wow, that's kind of dim. That didn't help. Let's okay, the thing in the bubble that the mouse is speaking isn't important for this. But basically you got those two balls. If I let go of them at the same time, the first question asks, both balls reach the end of the tracks at the same time, speed, both or neither. And this is one I'm not going to give you the answer today. <laughs> I want you to lose sleep over it over the weekend. What's going to happen? There's, there's a lot involved here. And I have a demo. We can do this Monday. And we'll finish up energy and do some projectile motion too. So, you know, A, it's got a little gravitational potential energy there. I'm going to let go of it. It's going to convert to kinetic. Gravity's going to pull down on it. It'll accelerate. It's going to get up to a certain speed. So is B. But B has a longer path doesn't it? And it's changing its gravitational more, but it has to go down, but it comes back up. Does that negate it? But how fast is it going? I mean, we got momentum here, we got kinetic energy, we got forces, acceleration. Not only who's going faster at the end, who gets there faster? And look at B. Additionally, both balls will reach the end of the track with the same momentum, kinetic energy, or will they be different? Both? Same? So consider all these things. How fast they'll be going? Who will get there first or, or tie? How will their momentums and kinetic energies compare? I hope you'll have uh, some reasonable explanations Monday. I'll ask you and then we'll try it out. Um, I'll save that one. Okay, let's do we got f six minutes. A couple more machines, because I got them out. A lever is a simple machine. And so, here's a 26 pound lead brick that we used earlier. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's a different one, but. I'm going to raise it to here. And I'm going to go. <laughs> How much work? Well, it's 12 kilograms. It's mass times gravity, 10. 12 times 10 is 120. And I'm going to move it that far. So 120 times that. <laughs> a tenth of a meter. 10 centimeters, a tenth of a 100 times 12. Okay, I did 12 joules of work. 
Whoa. It has how many joules of gravitational potential energy? 12, good. Well, that I have to exert 120 newtons of force to do. 12 kilograms times acceleration of gravity, 10. 10 times 12, 120. You with me? Well, I don't like doing that. <laughs> I'm going to use less force. Piece of pinky. All right. I hope it's clear that I'm using a lot less force than 120 newtons to lift that. Same effect. Again, machines do not multiply and magically create more energy. We're doing the same amount of work. But you, they can allow you to use more force or less force. Depends on which way you want to go. Sometimes, you know, I get more force over here, I have to use less. Why is that? Well, it's a lever. This is a shorter distance, this is a longer distance. Notice I must move, I must exert my lower force for a longer distance. So I'm doing the same amount of work over here as, it, as that end's doing, but I don't need to as much force. I just have to do it for a longer distance. That's what ramps do. And check this out. Ow. Here's a, a mock of a screw. What's a screw? It's just a, an inclined plane wrapped up on itself. So you, you just go a lot longer distance <laughs> with a lot less force for the same amount of work done. And the last thing I'll do is this one. I need a volunteer, please. All right, sold. <laughs> Will you sit on this, balance yourself, and face the audience? Please. Sucker. <laughs> this is a screw jack. You got a good balance game there going. You comfy? I'm okay. Okay. Can, can you raise your feet up or will you fall off? Um, I probably will fall off. All right, but that'll kind of work. <laughs> I think you're getting the point. I don't have to exert much force. One finger here. All right, we're good. Thank you. One finger, little force, but a lot of distance, right? So I do a certain amount of work, but that was the same amount of work that the jack just did. It did a lot of force. How much? His weight. For this distance. So eventually I can lift the car, right? That's what a machine allows you to do. But you, you, it, they don't magically create more energy. They just make it easier. Any questions? Have a great weekend.